About two years ago, right after the MySQL conference, uh, Brian Aker started IMing me and saying, hey, you know what people use in their databases. Do a lot of people use this feature? Do a lot of people use that feature? Um, you know, if, if we kind of ripped this out and made it a plugin, what would you think? And then, you know, after a couple of weeks back and forth of a lot of questions, he said, hey, by the way, the reason that I'm asking you these questions is that we're working on this, this thing and this project, it's called Drizzle. Um, and then, you know, a couple months after that at OSCON, it was actually announced. So I didn't even know I was getting in kind of on the ground floor, but I actually loved having a voice in the product direction. A lot of times you do get developers who say, hey, you know what, we need something faster and better, but they don't necessarily use the product a lot, so they don't necessarily, you know, they know that they need it to be faster, but they don't know exactly what to take out, what to put in, what to leave there. Well, uh, the features that have been ripped out of Drizzle to make it a microkernel, as they call it, on the website, um, I don't know if the plan is to put them all back in. I believe what the plan is to do is to put whatever people need back in. So for example, one of the things that was ripped out was authentication, which meant that everybody, whenever you authentic, there was no username or password. You just logged into the database and you had super user privileges. That obviously is one of the first things to get put back as a plugin. Um, but when it was put back as a plugin, it wasn't just using the internal tables like MySQL does. Um, and you're now able to authenticate against things like LDAP, um, you know, HTTP access, that kind of thing, which is a much better feature than MySQL has. So I think the idea is to say, okay, let's start with very little and see what do you really need? Okay, and we'll code that. So will all the features get back into Drizzle? Probably not, but it, all the features that need to will be. Every software has limitations. I don't, I don't, um, it's, it's hard to say was Drizzle specifically solving some limitations of MySQL. Um, it certainly is trying to solve, to do things that MySQL either doesn't do at all or doesn't do in the ways that people need it to do it. Um, a lot of the things that were put into MySQL were put in, um, you know, years ago. Something replication, I mean, that was put in years and years ago. And, you know, times, are, times have changed now and we need more robust systems. Um, and it's really hard to change the legacy code that's in MySQL um, just because of um, releases and milestone-based releases um, as opposed to, say, an agile development model. Um, MySQL has milestone-based releases. So what that means is if I have coded a new feature and it works perfectly, and even if it fits in with all the code, um, it's very hard to get it into MySQL. It will come out in you know, MySQL probably you know, 5.7 or something, and, and it might be a year or so off, even though it can work right now, um, just because of those milestone-based releases. Uh, Drizzle has an, a more agile development model. If you have code and it works and it fits in with the Drizzle code, um, it'll be approved and it will go out in the next release. Um, that's the way that coding should be now, um, you know, in 2010. Some of the MySQL uh, development process seems to me, I'm not on the inside, it just seems to me that it's, it's mired back in, you know, the 1990s or even the early 2000 ways of doing it, and that's, that's how it is when you have older software. So the question of does it address the limitations, um, it's not just the coding itself, but the actual features, you know, it's trying to be have different features or have the same features but do it differently in, a, in an easier way, in a faster way, in a way that's more appropriate for the cloud computing environment that we have today. So I wouldn't necessarily call it limitations, it does different things. It would be like saying, does MySQL address limitations of, of Oracle or does Oracle address MySQL, you know, MySQL's limitations? They're different pieces of software. They do different things. So if you are limited by MySQL, you might find reprieve by using Drizzle. That's one of the things Drizzle is really, really good for. Um, Brian Aker will probably talk about this more, but uh, the gear man kind of manager, um, code manager, can actually work really well with Drizzle to do that scalability. Um, it's, from what I understand, it's harder to do with MySQL, really easy to do with Drizzle. So um, it does, in fact, address, you know, can you just add more machines very quickly, things that you might do in a cloud computing environment. I think that Drizzle is much better suited for it than MySQL is, but that's just because Drizzle has, is growing up in that. You know, Drizzle is, a, is, is an infant or a toddler right now, and it's growing up in that environment. So it's, it's kind of like our children are, are more uh, in tune with the digital age and computers and, and handheld devices like phones because they're growing up with them. 
whereas we didn't grow up with with those and so we're you know we're not used to you know tweeting we actually still go onto our computers to read email I have friends who are younger than I do that all, they do all their email reading on the iPhone um, and I'm kind of like how, and writing and I, I don't understand how they can do that so it's it's a different generational thing I don't think that it's a bad thing that MySQL isn't as good I mean it's it's great for cloud computing we have plenty of clients using MySQL in cloud computing environments I think Drizzle is better for a lot of the things that people want to use cloud computing environments too. Um, it's hard because then you might say, well, why don't you just convert all your clients to Drizzle? Well, moving databases is very difficult. Um, it's, not a, it's not a trivial thing to do. And again, some of the features are missing in Drizzle that are there in MySQL. So if pe people have dependent on those features and they're not there, there can be a trade-off between more speed and less functionality. Um, but of course then you can also code that functionality back in if you do need it and give back to the community by putting it back into Drizzle. If you talk about the SQL language, are you talking about MySQL's version of SQL or are you talking about the SQL standard? One of the things that Drizzle has tried to do is conform to the SQL standard where appropriate. Um, so not just be a slave to the SQL standard and just do everything as according to the standard, but really think about it and say, okay, this is how it works in MySQL. That's an, this is how it works in the standard. Sometimes it's the same. Should, should that be the way it works in Drizzle? And sometimes, even though something's a standard and it is in MySQL as, as the standard, it's changed in Drizzle. Other times, you look at something and you say, okay, here's the standard and here's MySQL. We should conform to the standard. Um, MySQL and actually all database software um, there's not one database software I know of that conforms completely to one, to one SQL standard. They all both add, they all, all database software adds to this SQL standard by adding their own statements. For example, MySQL has added um, things like select SQL no cache, um, select, uh, you know, show the show commands. Those are not SQL standard. Um, but it also doesn't have a lot of the standard as well, and that's any database software. So the same is true with Drizzle. Some of the things are compliant to the SQL standard, and some things are not. And every decision that has been made has been very conscious. It's been very public. You can go to the Google groups, I think it's a Google group for Drizzle, and you can see, you know, somebody will start a question that says, here's how it's, you know, done in the standard, and here's how it's done in MySQL. Do you think this is how we should do it here? You know, and there's a discussion of, you know, a bunch of people, and everyone puts their two cents in, and then, you know, eventually we kind of agree on a decision, and that's how it's done. There's lots of support for Drizzle. Um, there isn't, uh, because there's no Drizzle the company, um, there's not uh, direct support for, you know, Drizzle by, you know, Drizzle the company because the company doesn't exist. Um, but there are plenty of people who, who will support it. I'm sure you can, uh, you know, ask the developers, they would support it. Um, my company, Pythian, um, certainly will support Drizzle. Uh, right now we support, obviously, MySQL, but we also support Oracle and SQL Server. Um, and we have a little bit of Postgres here and there. Just it's whatever our clients come to us with. So certainly we support Drizzle. I'll just ask if there's any other statement you'd like to make that I didn't get to today. Not really. Um, we didn't get to talk about community, and that's something that I did want to talk to you about. But uh, I have a keynote tomorrow morning um, about uh, called Under New Management. Um, it's basically how what's the, the future of the MySQL community. We heard today from Edward Scriven about what's going to happen to the MySQL, the product. So uh, I encourage everyone uh, to watch that video as well. I'm sure it will be online. There's also live streaming um, of it if you happen to be watching at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Um, if not, I'm sure after that the video will be put up. So I'm excited about that, and I think, it's, I think it's really, really good. We can really use the resources that Oracle has, because Oracle has, has a lot of resources. Um, and so I, I look forward to saying more about that tomorrow. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Andy.